Yo, we got everything. We got pit bulls, we got horses in the island. Alligators, you know what I'm saying? In the hood. <laughs> and he's purring too, like a kitten. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Give him a name, sorry. The name is Lacoste. Now, Daddy Yankee, you talk about the streets and, and being from the streets and coming from the streets, but it was these very streets that at one point almost ended your life, you mm -hmm. know, when you were shot. Yeah. Tell me, how did that happen? I mean, what was going on? I mean, that happened, I remember that day, man. It was like one of the pitch black moments in my life. Mm -hmm. Or it was the Three Kings Day here in Puerto Rico. We were celebrating Three Kings Days. Okay. And I was at DJ. What is that? That, that's, that's tradition right there. Okay. That's six, uh, January 6th in Puerto Rico means the Three King Days. Okay. You give away from the kids, you give toy to the kids. Uh -huh. You know, it's like Santa Claus, but in the Lang way. Okay. You know, Three right. King Days. Okay. Um, and I was at Playero's apartment. DJ, DJ Playero. DJ Playero. Okay. I was recording. Uh, I remember for the 36, it was uh, one of his mixtapes. And I went down, you know, I went downstairs and I was just vibing with the homies, you know. Mm -hmm. When all of a sudden I saw I saw the crossfire, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? And I got caught in an exchange of bullets. Okay. And I remember that I had to, and I went I went under a van, mm -hmm. you know. When I when I was stumbling, mm -hmm. you know, I fell down, boom, and I went under a van, and that was the only that's the, that was the way that I survived. Really? From that day, you know, and it took me more than a year to recuperate from that day. You know, in, I was in recovery from one year in the hospital. And the, the bullet is still in your hip? It's right still there. in my hip. Which one, the right one? The or right one, the okay. right one. All right, cool. So yeah. you was with DJ Playero, who's like the godfather of reggaeton. Oh, definitely he's yeah. the godfather of reggaeton. Okay, and now that very same bullet, you know, years later, got you to become Daddy Yankee, the person you are today. Oh yeah, that bullet uh, just made me being focused in music. And, okay. Okay, no, because I didn't have any option. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just music or music, okay. you know? And I was so determined, you know, and so focused and not fail, mm -hmm. you know, and that attitude got me to this point. So it was because of a bullet <laughs> that inspired you to go in the studio and make one of the biggest records, the biggest record in reggaeton uh -huh. history that also brought the music out of Puerto Rico and gave it to the world. Did you ever think Gasolina would accomplish that much? And how did you even come to make that record? <laughs> <laughs> I never, you know, I never thought that Gasolina would accomplish that goal. Uh -huh. Because you make music just for making music, you know, mm -hmm. without thinking in any goals. Just, you know, you put your soul in the music and that's it. Mm -hmm. And and being honest with you, Sway, when I saw Gasolina took in, you know, to that point, I was like very surprised, you know what I'm saying? Because that, that, that sounds specifically, you know, transcendent barriers and languages mm -hmm. in the entire world mm -hmm. and put reggaeton on the map. Mm -hmm. But um, besides that, a lot of people thought, okay, this kid, what's Gasolina? Yeah. Let me pick up the album. But when the people find out, oh my God, this yeah. is good music. Uh -huh. The kid is for real. You know what I'm saying? I got like 10 more joints in that album that they were hot hits in the radio. Yeah. And I gained a lot of words, you know, and for that album. So you transcended all like genre barriers now. Mm -hmm. You're not just a, a, a Latin artist. You're a pop artist. Uh huh. In a sense, right? Uh huh. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like I didn't, I did, I didn't want the pop music. Just pop went to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't have like a record label, but be, uh, behind me, putting money behind me, like that's that young to the mm -hmm. artist. No, I wasn't an independent label. My label, the Cartel Records. Yes. You know, is everything happened naturally. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it was just the people getting the music. When you got good music in your album, everybody's gonna get it. Now, earlier we talked about how reggaeton got its roots from hip-hop and mm -hmm. the merengue, salsa, and, uh -huh. and, and, and dance hall. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of parallels and similarities in what you're going through for reggaeton and what Bob Marley went through for mm -hmm. reggae in itself. You know, in the sense that once he became so popular, he became bigger than the politicians. You know, right. and, in some, and in some cases, he got a lot of pressure from political figures. Mm -hmm. Talk about the politics that reggaeton has gone through, because at one point, mm -hmm. the government came down on the music, right? Yeah, in the 1995, I remember the year, too. 
It was 1995, remember that we put out those mixtapes and then because of the language, they, they, we were banned. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And politicians and everybody and the high class society, they were looking at, looking at us over the shoulder like, mm -hmm. these kids are from the hood, they don't know what they're saying, they're ignorant, they're criminals, mm -hmm. they promote violence because they didn't know this. Mm -hmm. They didn't know the life that we were living. Mm -hmm. So the minority became the majority. Okay. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And we were accepted by the people. And once you're accepted by the people, it's a wrap, man. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, you're forced to deal with us. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's what's happening. Right now, the politicians are using the music in their campaigns. So how really? funny is that? That's you know? funny. That's the, the, that's the irony, right? right? Before they banned the music, now they use the music. They use them, yeah. Okay. So yeah. Re reggaeton, just like Chuck D once said, hip-hop is the CNN for the streets. Oh, yeah, definitely. So how would you describe reggaeton to the people? What is it? What, what kind of vehicle is uh, it for the, the people? Uh, first of all, reggaeton is the voice of the people. Mm -hmm. Number one, you know, and being the voice of the people, you're able to speak whatever you want to speak. Mm -hmm. You're a mirror of the people. Okay. You feel me? And being here, and, and if somebody, you know, got killed, somebody, you, you see somebody, you know, got shot, or if you see somebody, you know, going to studying from the hood, yeah. and he makes a sale because of the story, and you saw that, you're able to write about that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. You have to write about that because that's life. You know, we, we, we write about everything, the way we party, mm -hmm. the way we dance, we about the way we see the struggle here, you mm -hmm. know. All the struggle that I went through, I put it in my lyrics. You put it in your lyrics. I put it in my lyrics. That's why everybody so identified with me. They call me the people's champ. The people's champ. Okay. That's 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 my alias. That's my nickname. Everybody call me that. Do you say the people's champ in Espanol? El campeón del pueblo. El can. El campeón de champ. El campeón del pueblo. Del pueblo. Del pueblo. You gotta help me out. I'm work. I'm learning. No, no, you're I'm learning. learning. I'm learning. Okay. That's right. They okay, call so me like the that. People of champ. All right. All right. The kangri, which means like the boss. Uh huh. The kangri. That's a slang word here. Uh huh. El kangri. You see everybody saying kangri. Kangri. You know what I'm saying? Okay. The boss. The you know. Boss. They call me like that because in business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing you know clever moves in business. Okay. They call me like that, boss. But it's like that, the people shine, gain that name, you know, just coming back from the community and having that street cred here with everybody. All right, let's talk about reggaeton too in itself. The sex. Uh huh. The sex that comes from the music and All right. the, the lyrics that are provocative. All right. Where does that come from? I mean, it's the way we party here. Uh huh. It, it's when you go, if you go to a club, you will see that. Okay. You feel me? It, it's, it's hotter than any place, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And everybody that has been here in Puerto Rico can, can tell you about that, you know. And when we go to the club and we see that, the way they dance, the way a girl get down with a man, so we write about that. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It's not that we're promoting sex, it's like this happening. That's what it is. <laughs> you feel okay. me? Right. It's happening, is we're it seeing that. I mean, has it always been like, you know, just to be liberated and be open with your sexuality when it comes I mean, to Latino in, culture? In the Caribbean, we're like that. Mm -hmm. If you go to the Dominican Republic, if you go uh, I've never been in Cuba, mm -hmm. but they dance pretty well in Cuba. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a beautiful country. You know, a lot of Cuban, uh, good friend of mine in Miami have told me that. Okay. That we're very similar in the way we party. Dominicans, Cubans, and Puerto Ricans. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you go to Jamaica, even though they're not Latinos, they party. They party, yeah. They party yeah. real wide, yeah. like us. Yeah, yeah. You know, man, so it's a Caribbean thing. You mm -hmm. feel me? So we Plus just bring. It's, it's hot. It's hot. It's hot out you here. You just we just bring in the Caribbean fire to the states. So tell me about this park. Why is this park so important right now? I mean, this park means a lot to me because I grew up playing this baseball field. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The name of the field is Santiago Iglesia, but they name it, they put on another name, Juan Cintron. Mm -hmm. He was our coach here. You know, he got killed right there. Where? Behind. He got shot Behind right the there? Behind the catcher, yeah. He got shot right there. Uh -huh. And their son, they grew up with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they one of my best friends till today. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I, I got that memory in my head, you know. Yeah. Since I was a little kid, I was in shock because he was my manager. Then I went to his barrel, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, and seeing my manager, you know, right there, that, you know, I couldn't sleep in those days. How old were you when that happened? 
I was like six years old. So you and a lot of other kids around that age saw this man get killed on this field? Yeah. Really? With something like that. It was, it was, it was tough because mm -hmm. a manager for a kid represented like a role model. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And you don't understand that till you get to a certain age to mm -hmm. understand what really happened. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're a kid, you just, you're just shocked. You're just being your role model getting killed. Mm -hmm. it, it's something that you will never, you will never forget. Wow, that's, that's crazy, man. It's like Puerto Rico is like any hood USA, but people don't realize how hard it is in Puerto mm -hmm. Rico. Like, I'm just looking around. What are these buildings? I mean, how these buildings always been here? I mean, those are nice buildings now, but when I was growing up, those was like ghetto, real, real hood. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it was minor leagues baseball from those kids, other kids from Las Lomas that I used to, that I used to live over there. And we, we were here like playing baseball, like dreaming to be a major league player. That's big in um, Puerto Rican culture, baseball as a sport. But mm -hmm. it, do a lot of kids look at this sport as a way of a means of getting out? Or, or? Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you need to be, if you're Puerto Rican, you ever have to play baseball or boxing. Baseball or boxing. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh, uh -huh. If you didn't do one of those, you, you're not Puerto Rican. You're not you Puerto Rican? <laughs> you feel me? Right. Boxing or playing baseball. Mm -hmm. So baseball was kind of a means of taking it to another level and achieving a lot of success and mm -hmm. maybe getting that major record, I mean, that major label, major label. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking Major League, okay. Uh, uh. So baseball for a lot of kids represented a way out, a, a means of getting that Major League contract and oh, yeah. make a lot of money, right? Definitely. Imagine you watching, uh, uh, it's like the kids right now, watching Bernie Williams, Jorge mm -hmm. Posada, mm -hmm. um, um, these cats that represent Puerto Rico, Carlos Bertrand, Carlos Delgado, mm -hmm. all those little kids that play baseball here, um, they're looking up to them, you know, mm -hmm. right? to be one of them. As I grew up watching on other players, mm -hmm. you know, right here in this baseball field, like, I, I mean, Roberto Clemente, Clemente, he wasn't, he wasn't my, in my time, you know what uh -huh. I'm saying? But that's everybody's baseball player dream to be mm -hmm. like Roberto Clemente. Roberto Clemente, legendary, right? Legendary. He's like the, one of the biggest icons that we have here in, in the country. And what I'm starting to discover about Puerto Rico, similar to the States or any other hood, is as young Puerto Rican men, at, any, at some point you got to make a decision. It seems like you're always surrounded by these streets, mm -hmm. the street wars and you know, all the ills oh, of the yeah. street. Oh, yeah. Or, you know, you try to take a different route that you at the end of the day chose to go through this music, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely, it's, it's like me, I was playing baseball mm -hmm. and, and during that, that exact time, uh -huh. I got shot, yeah. you know? So it was a wrap for me to be a baseball player. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was like very frustrated. I was disappointed by life, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden God gave me this talent mm -hmm. to support my family. Mm -hmm. That's why, I, that's how I get it. I, you know, I fell in love with the reggaeton culture, Okay. you know, because that was a way to, you know, to support my family.